Hello and welcome to Living Wisdom Preparation Connection. Uh, I just want to start by ah, taking a big breath and inviting all of you who are tuned in across time and space to just Take some nice deep breaths and allow yourself to be here to let go of anything that you were doing before, anything that needs to happen when this preparation session is complete and to just let yourself be here right now fully. <sighs> Starting with the breath and sending a grounding cord from the base of the spine, imagining your energy body extending from the base of your spine and going deep into the earth, connecting with all the life that's below the surface of the earth, releasing any tension, mind, body, spirit through that grounding cord. And then taking a moment to extend from the heart, the energy branches going up to source, connecting with everything that's greater than us, that wishes us well, our limitless selves. And releasing upwards. And allowing ourselves to come into this sacred time, sacred space, treating our bodies in a sacred way and imagining connecting with all of the lineages, the medicine lineages and all those who've come to sit in ceremony to receive healing connecting connecting with all those who are coming to sit with us in ceremony, all those who want to be sitting with us in ceremony, all those who will be coming in in the future. And feeling that connection, that power, that strength of all those coming to work with sacred sacraments, sacred entheogens, Ah, across time, space, and matter, feeling held and supported by this greater community, by these powerful living allies. And allowing yourself to be here in this moment. So you may be familiar with this quote by Albert Einstein, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. And coming into the unknown is what ceremony, especially with sacred plant allies, sacred living medicines, that's what they're all about, is allowing us to go into the unknown and hopefully connecting not just with the unknown and all possibility, but connecting with the unknown with the support in a container of everything that's greater than us that wishes us well and so i want to acknowledge you because choosing to want to come into the unknown isn't particularly human nature these days and it takes a lot of courage to step up and to want to do healing in our lives so Blessings to you. Thank you for wanting to be here and taking the time to drop in and make this everything that it can be, making it as amazing as it can be and as sacred and as powerful as it can be. So thank you for showing the respect for this medicine, respect for your facilitators, respect for the experience in your own life, your own healing by showing up and being present. And that being said, I don't mind if you put it at, if you listen to this at 2x, (laughs) for those tuning in in future time, perfectly all right, and make sure that it's all landing, that it's all landing. So I want to share a little bit about me and my experience, since I'm one of the guides and allies who's going to be supporting you in ceremony with living wisdom. Uh, I was in the Amazon several several years ago 
and um, I wasn't yet leading people into the Amazon, but I was there and just in deep meditation with the medicine and ayahuasca said, Amanda, I'm a big fucking deal. (laughs) I'm a big deal. And people that are coming to this medicine, Westerners that are coming into this powerful experience, they aren't getting the kind of information that could really help them to prepare for experience and then integrate this this healing that is available to them and i had been working with ayahuasca and in with other uh, entheogens other plant allies medicine allies for a long time and had been cultivating my own way of working with the medicine that was really powerful really helpful and um and the ayahuasca said this is important what you have cultivated for yourself to make it so powerful so effective um it's important to share and to make sure that people treat this as the big deal that it really is uh, and give it the respect and reverence that it can be and so uh as I started offering medicine ceremonies as well, tuned in and asked a lot of people, you know, who were stepping into the work, did some research and asked people what, you know, if you're new to working with entheogens, if you are um, curious about it, what do you need to feel like you're stepping into this work in a good way and resoundingly preparation and integration support and this was a long time before now gratefully this um, conversation has been happening for quite a while and um and and i'm grateful for that and it's still very important Uh, so even if you've stepped into preparation before please tune in because what i'm bringing today is a culmination it's actually going to be a part of um, Living Wisdom's Entheo Jedi training, which is to support folks in coming into working with entheogens in a reverent way, in a masterful way, in a way that maximizes the potential of healing for the self, but also helps you to become a powerful addition to the container so that in a group setting even if you're just a participant you're bringing incredible energy and wisdom and mastery into the experience so that it can be as as helpful and healing as possible and and high vibration so um thank you for taking the time to honor this wisdom coming through it feels really exciting to be able to share it again. Uh, this is an update on some older preparation information that has previously gone out. So I invite you to just take a deep breath and pat yourself on the back for taking the time to really come to this work in a good way. It's so important. It's so helpful. The more that you treat your life in general, but uh, whatever you're coming into sacred ceremony, the more respect and reverence you give it, the more you get out of it for certain. It's been my experience without fail for myself and in supporting this work with others and even without entheogens. So thank you for choosing to come to this work in a good way. My name is Amanda Eloesh and uh this specific um preparation is we're going to focus on huachuma it is very helpful for ayahuasca it's very helpful for nino santos the sacred um mushrooms psilocybin Uh, it's very helpful for pretty much any medicine and there are specific things i'm going to share about huachuma that aren't necessarily transferable Um, And I will mention those as we go. 
Um, so welcome to this preparation experience. Um, I received my ministry with Wachuma through Medicine Path Native American Church, and they are connected with the ONAC. And George Gregel is the, the spiritual leader, the medicine man for Medicine Path. And uh, I started sitting with Medicine Path in 2010. And it became a, a very fast spirit family for me and felt so grateful to be a part of their ceremonies. And in the end of 2010 was my very first Wachuma experience with Medicine Path. I'd been sitting with their in their weekly prayer circles and they pray with the Chinupa, which is a sacred pipe. And um, in 2012, George Gregel adopted me as his spirit sister. And in 2013, uh, I had been teaching Sacred Feminine Mystery School and had long desired to bring medicine into that experience. And in January 2013, George Gregel gave me my Wachuma ministry. And so the tradition that the, this ministry comes through in the Wachuma tradition that I have learned with is Lakota, but the ceremonies that I offer are very unique. They are uh, a blend of my many, many years since 2003 working with ayahuasca, going on many dietas, guiding many dietas. Um, it's based in uh, a lifelong connection with sac the sacred feminine and in teaching uh, and in channeling sacred feminine archetypes in the sacred feminine mystery school that used to be the living wisdom mystery school. And now it's living wisdom, nonprofit community church, um, whatever, whatever name feels good to you. Uh, and it's it's being able to sit in multiple lineages, Mayan, multiple Mayan traditions, um, multiple Native American tradition ceremonies, sitting with peyote, sitting in multiple kinds of Nino Santos ceremonies, cacao ceremonies transformational experiences without any kind of entheogens um, and working with amazing teachers from different indigenous lineages from all over the world. So I feel really blessed to be able to offer this medicine and honor and respect the traditions, the, Shichang, the Shichangu tribe of the Lakota. Um, and grateful for the sacred ways in which these medicines have been held and really grateful for the permission to be able to offer this medicine in a unique way. And um, people have asked me about appropriation and I, I definitely have a lot of thoughts and feelings about it because um, there are people uh, who died and suffered greatly trying to preserve these traditions, indigenous peoples, First Nation peoples. And I don't take the, the permission to offer this medicine lightly in any way. And um, these medicines, these entheogens, these living sacraments are here to help us to heal. And they aren't owned by anyone. And they are help. They're here to help help us to heal the parts of us that are out of balance, which is a lot of people from European descent, a lot of light skinned people. And so uh, I meditated with these medicines, specifically Wachuma. You know, why do you want to help? And they said, Well, we're you know we're really just rooted in the reality that every, everything is interconnected, which is indigenous mind, which is the, the consciousness of, an, of the indigenous and First Nations people that everything is interconnected. 
And so we have to be mindful of how we engage with and impact everything in our lives. And this whole mentality of power over colonialism, imperialism, uh, that tried to obliterate these, these medicine ways and the indigenous peoples and their sacred languages and their sacred rites of passage and their sacred lands. Uh, that whole mentality is what's out of balance. And that's, we, you know, this is what we, one of the things that we're here to heal primarily. And they, we don't, we don't have any prejudices against any race or skin color or anything we honor everyone's sovereignty and once somebody says i'm coming to receive help then we're here to help and it doesn't matter um and the more safe safe and sacred container it is the more healing we are able to do and so the mission of living wisdom is to create safe and sacred containers for our diverse community to learn heal and grow together and that means i'm i'm here to share the beautiful healing traditions that have uh, informed and shaped how i have worked with medicine and how i facilitate and uh and i'm not really here n none of us are here to create a dogma or a teaching per se, but to share what has served our health and vitality and uh, what's helped us to learn, heal and grow. And uh, we're here to co-create it with all those who show up to sit with these medicines. So um, just wanted to address that and say thank you to these sacred allies for healing us for the wisdom for the permission grateful for the spirits of this place we're specifically on wapo land sacred wapo land and feel nourished and blessed by the spirits the ancestors of this land and grateful to have that support so ah we are when we come into ceremony um you know when we work with these allies these entheogens we are stepping into an altered state and this pulls away the veils the barriers that usually keep us separate from everything else and if it's not done in a safe and sacred container and not with an experienced and trust, trustworthy guide, then we're opening ourselves to many layers and dimensions of influence, including what other people, other folks in ceremony are releasing. And we're dropping our normal boundaries so that we can connect with these, with everything that's greater than us that wishes us well, the medicine, uh, all of the guides and allies that we bring with us, all the guides and allies that other attendees bring with them, and all of the guides and allies and sacred elements showing up in the container through the facilitators, through the sacred altar. Um, we're available, you know, there's a lot available to help us. And without a safe and sacred container, there can be a lot of funk going on that we can also be susceptible to. And so it's really important, you know, there are a lot of people, there's more and more conversations happening around entheogens, which is so great because they're here to help us and we need the help. Um, so grateful for the conversations and a lot of people are rushing to have these experiences and a lot of people are even rushing to facilitate these experiences, even with, you know, good intentions um there's there's not necessarily going to be proper education and and even with a lot of knowledge about ceremony and how to conduct a ceremony and the the medicines and how they can impact our physiology and our chemistry even with a, no, a lot of knowledge without really embodiment and really being of service to the medicine and being in a sacred relationship with the medicine um, and without initiation 
then what we open ourselves up to things that we may not be able to see or detect or be aware of they're impacting us they're impacting our psychic energy and so it's important to be able to be informed and uh and to make sure that the experience that you're coming into is held in a safe and sacred way um so just take a moment to ask yourself what is calling you to the medicine right now take a moment to drop in you can pause this recording and meditate it with it for a moment and make sure that you have a clear idea of what is calling you. Are you coming to it just because you heard about it? It sounds cool. And you're an, you know, an experienced junkie and you just want to have this experience. Um, or are you really feeling a deep soul calling and you don't even know why, or maybe there's something specifically happening in your body, mind, spirit, uh, spirit phenomena that has been elusive as far as healing and elevating it and you are hoping that these sacred allies can support you in healing and breaking through old blocks uh, and having some a better reality for yourself um, so just take a moment to tune in and then also really ask yourself what is my medicine uh not everybody's not all the amazing beautiful powerful sacred medicines are for everyone and so tuning in what is your medicine and if you have questions about how to get clarity on that a lot of that can come in ceremony and if you really want to feel like you want some clarity please feel free to reach out to us uh, if you're watching this then you should have information on how to connect with both matthew and myself um, to get support and getting greater clarity around that. So in preparation, medications, dietary needs, um, it's really helpful to tune in with a physician about what medications or special dietary experiences you have for your health. It's really important to tune in with a trusted physician about your experience because we cannot advise you on that I will share with Wachuma specifically that there aren't any general contraindications for Wachuma and it's important that you are informed and so knowing what your specific medical experience is any medicines you're working with to know how that may impact you know how that may impact what you're experiencing right now. Um, when you come to ceremony, your anonymity is honored. Um, we're very open and, like, you know, out in the open about our experience, but we do honor your anonymity and uh, want you to know that your experience with us is held in a safe and sacred way, and we only share. Some, we do share testimonials and there are some people that have incredible miraculous experiences and they want to tell other people and they are happy with us telling other people. Um, and uh, we don't do that unless we have your permission. So I've had questions, how is Wachuma different from other medicines or altering substances? Um, so Wachuma is very, very gentle it's very heart opening it creates a lot of clarity uh, and this is I, i'm saying this from my own personal experience and from sitting in multiple uh many many and a varied um wachuma ceremonies held by other other facilitators and hearing what other people experience when they come to work with wachuma so very heart opening a lot of clarity about what the prayer of the heart is not the prayer of the fear or the prayer of the ego but the true prayer of the heart becomes very clear um, people ask how is it compared to ayahuasca they are very very different medicines and i find wachuma a lot gentler especially during ceremony uh, and we may get into that a little later after ceremony 
if you make a strong prayer for your life, if you make a really big prayer for your life, then the things that are not in alignment with that prayer, there, something needs to happen with them. They need to change or they need to dissolve and they will do that <laughs> in different ways based on uh, what you prayed in, what's coming in and your ability to navigate that change. And we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, so these allies are conscious beings and it's impossible to say exactly what your experience is going to be. Um, it really depends on how open you are to fully receive. It can be really scary to step into the unknown, even though we're consciously doing it. Um, our minds like to think they know everything. <laughs> they don't like to be in the unknown. And when there are new experiences coming in to elevate, there is that fear of death because the, the, it's a death to the ways things have been done. Old thoughts, old patterns, old beliefs, old habits, old addictions. And all of those can start to get agitated and uh, resist. And it can show up as I need to know everything, so I'm not going to be open and uh, I'm going to try to predict how it's going to be and I'm going to have expectations and I'm going to have judgments and I'm going to be in an analytical mind the whole time. Uh, or it can be tightness in the body. Um, it can be locks in other layers of our energy, body, mind, spirit complex. Um, we can put up armoring and defend against the healing that we're asking for. And sometimes it's very unconscious. Our ceremonies do, we, we do a lot to weave in integration right in the ceremony, meaning helping the body, the mind and the spirit to open up, to soften and relax and receive and be as receptive to the help that we're asking for as possible. So it's really great. We really honor everyone's sovereignty and we don't want you to do anything that feels unsafe. And I encourage you, I invite you to do things that feel uncomfortable, awkward, outside your comfort zone, because again, stepping into the unknown, but yeah, and if you want to do something, if you want to have a different reality, you have to try something new. And what we'll be sharing as far as breath work, guided meditation, very gentle movement, it's all to support these defenses in dropping and relaxing so that the medicine, all the allies, everything that's greater than you that wishes you well, that's there for you can be of service to you. So if you're afraid, um, you, you know, you may lock down against that. So uh, you may have a high, high tolerance to the medicine as well. Um, and so it's really important. It's really helpful. It's really helpful to come as open, as surrendered as possible. And uh, again, hopefully really participate in the practices that we'll be offering to help open up the mind, the emotional body, the physical body, and all other layers of your body, mind, spirit complex so that you can get all the help possible. Just want to check and see where we're at. So these medicine, a lot of people are, you know, come in and like, oh, you know, I have this, I have this idea of what it's going to be. I'm going to see cool things. I'm going to feel really high. Um, again, it's really helpful to let go of those expectations. Uh, some, some people can come and drink a lot of medicine and not necessarily feel altered at all, myself included, and leave ceremony and proceed to see profound changes in their lives. Some people can come and drink no medicine, just, you know, make a prayer with the medicine, hold the, hold the bowl, you know, put their hands next to the medicine altar and make a prayer and ask for help and feel incredibly elevated, 
have visions. Um, so the amount of medicine that you get in your body, it actually doesn't really matter ultimately because these allies are here to help us. And I've experienced a full spectrum within myself, taking plenty of medicine, feeling completely sober, uh, and then having no medicine and feeling like, wow, that was very strong. And so the medicine gives us what we need to support our prayer. And again, it, it's, it, it's not likely to give you what you expect because we're stepping into the unknown. So I personally get really excited when the unexpected happens because it's a strong sign to me that I am in the unknown and it's a reminder of little ways that I ha I think I can predict. I think I can control my experience. I know it's going to happen, but as soon as I realize I actually don't, uh, you know, because I'm not getting what I, you know, expected, that's a good sign. So if you come to ceremony and feel very, very sober, uh, it's not a sign that the medicine's not working for you. Uh, it's a really great opportunity to look at your own expectations and what's going on in your own consciousness that's telling you that this, is, this isn't how it's supposed to be and how can you open yourself up to the unknown. Uh, and you can also ask us for help. Um, so I already shared a very little could make you feel very elevated, large doses, you may stay grounded. Ah, uh, yeah. Again, this medicine is very, very gentle. There are people who ingest Huachuma at high doses that offer some kind of intense psychedelic experience. Uh, I have never been in a ceremony where that high uh, dose is offered. I've never felt it necessary. Uh, and that's not uh, we do three rounds of medicine and this is the the impact of that medicine in the three rounds is generally as typical as medicine can be it's typical of all of the other medicine ceremonies that i've participated in in general um, if you happen to be a very visual person or maybe just open yourself in a way that you haven't before it may become a very visual experience you may start to notice that that colors are alive that all of your senses that there's more uh sensitivity uh that sounds are more profound that they feel multi-dimensional uh it can awaken super senses and the work that we do specifically in the living wisdom ceremonies are created are are facilitated in a way to help you access more and more of the layers of yourself that we've been programmed to not even be aware of anymore so it may awaken some senses that you haven't had access to before and that's wonderful um, but in general it's not particularly psychedelic um, let's see what else i want to share about that yeah um the less armored you are the more open you are and we do things again to use the senses our five senses at least that we're aware of we work on softening and opening them because as we soften and open those senses we can open the gateway to receptivity for sure receiving all the help possible but it also creates a softening and opening to access awareness of other layers of ourselves that we may not have previously had awareness of. So the medicine is very helpful in that way. Um, but it's not particularly like ungrounding. It's usually easy to walk. It's easy to go to the bathroom. It's easy to get water. It's, you know, easy to drive afterwards. So it's very gentle in that way. 
And I already talked about before, you know, really tuning into the prayer and the, the Wachuma can help you get greater clarity on what your prayer actually is. So we can come in with uh, prayers that are based on fear. Um, I don't want to be alone. So I need, you know, I want to attract a partner who's not going to abandon me. Um, we may have fears, other, you know, prayers based on fear or ego that aren't particularly in alignment with what's in our best and highest and when we come into the ceremony sitting with that medicine and again participating in the way that we create the experience specifically it further enhances your ability to tune into the prayer of your own heart and to get clarity on what's actually possible for you um, below the fears of, below the prayers of the fear, below the prayers of the ego are the soul's prayer, the heart's prayer. And uh, the Wachuma definitely helps us to tune in greater and greater to that. So you may notice throughout the day that your prayer you came in with has shifted, has refined a bit over the arc of our day together. So it is good to start tuning in to what your prayer is. Uh, journaling about it beforehand is really, really helpful. You can call it a goal, you can call it an intention, a quest, whatever. Uh, I like to use the word prayer uh, because the elements of prayer psychologically just uh, help us in ways, uh, whether you are atheist or super woo woo like me, uh, the whole practice of prayer uh, really helps uh, open our minds up to something bigger than what we currently know, which is again helping us to step into the unknown and make ourselves available to something elevated. Um, and we do that again throughout ceremony to help you to do that. Uh, it's great to stay mindful of your prayer, your intention. Uh, and it's interesting, a lot of people will say, say this, uh, the moment that you feel called the ceremony or the moment that you register ceremony begins. And a lot of people will say, yeah, the moment I signed up, all of a sudden things started to change in my life. So that medicine is timeless. And the moment we give permission, the moment we open ourselves up to I'm going to I'm going to be stepping into the unknown, I'm going to make myself available to something greater than me that wishes me well to support me in having a better reality for my life the moment we give that permission the moment we that's when we start can start to see some changes in our relationships in our work in our environment in our thoughts and our health so um please feel free to connect with us if you notice that and you want support that is primary primarily what matthew and i do helping people before and after to navigate the changes that are happening in your favor to align with your sacred prayer for your life. It's not always gentle. It's not always easy, especially if there are old um, patterns of behavior that are afraid of the new thing because we don't see it yet. You don't know what it is yet. Um, all we see is like everything's falling apart. And so it can click in some old um, patterns of behavior that then get armored and locked down and resistant to the prayer that we just made for ourselves. So please reach out to us. We'll help you in any way we can. We're here for you before, during, and after our time together. Um, it's great as you are pre-ceremony to again journal and to really pay attention to your dreams because the dream time is a powerful way that the subconscious can communicate with us so dream time journaling your dreams is really helpful and writing down challenges that are coming up ahas opportunities things that are different than you expected uh, things falling apart, great to journal about all of that, that. And again, if it starts to feel overwhelming and like it's not creating excitement and like, yes, I'm stepping into the ceremony, I'm getting this new elevation, 
Instead, it's like, oh my God, what it, you know, what's happening in my life? This sucks. Uh, you know, any oppressive or hard responses creating tightness in your physical body, uh, in your mental state, heaviness, hard feelings, emotional state. Uh, please reach out to us. We're here for you. Uh, so I, before I said, there's not really a, a specific diet that's connected with Wachuma, although um, plenty of people share something very similar to the ayahuasca diet, which means no dairy, no red meat, no sugar, no alcohol, uh, no processed foods. Um, and it, depending on how deep down the rabbit hole you go with the ayahuasca diet can be no, nothing fermented, nothing very cold, nothing very spicy, uh, salt can be, uh, something that is eliminated. So very basically whole foods, super clean, uh, and is there anything else? Some people even eliminate all citrus fruits, except for lemon. So it really depends. Again, if you want, if you want to know what we, I mean, we we do eat a, a generally a pretty clean diet. Um, caffeine is something that I don't think I mentioned already. Uh, is something that is re, re suggested to be eliminated. This is for ayahuasca. Again, with wachuma, um, I've been to many many ceremonies where no dietary restrictions were shared. So it's a much more um, forgiving and tolerant medicine. And I will say that the cleaner your system is, it's like, you know, if you want an upgrade, you know, get do, do what you can to make yourself available to it because these medicines work on subtle levels. And if you can do your part to release, you know, heavy, things in your body, in your system, it can really help that medicine to come in and be incredibly beneficial. And it'll probably make it a lot easier on your body because people can get well or purge from throwing up. Um, there's something else coming through I wanted to share around diet. Oh yeah, well, traditionally we don't eat during, once we drink the wachuma we usually don't eat for the rest of the day until we break for our wopila we drink plenty of water that's really really helpful and that can help uh with hunger if you're drinking plenty of water if and it can be a good challenge uh to be in a place of fasting uh, i grew up in a tradition where we fasted once a month and so it's not a big deal for me and i have found there are a lot of spiritual traditions that talk about when we fast when we go without it is a powerful signal to everything that's greater than us that wishes us well that we're coming to ask for help and that we're emptying ourselves out to receive and i've heard that from multiple traditions and so that might be something I really encourage you to do that. And if there's, if it's, if you need to eat for your health or you start to freak out because you haven't eaten and it's distracting you from being present or you think that may happen, please bring some very simple snacks for yourself and take care of yourself because that's more important <laughs> to take care of yourself so that you can be surrendered and relaxed and open if you're afraid you're going to pass out from hypoglycemia or whatever um, that's not going to be helpful so please take care of yourself and do make it discreet because other people may be choosing to fast it may not be the easiest thing for them and it may be difficult for them to watch so just be mindful of that and it's perfectly all right um <laughs> So this medicine is to help us, is here to help us when everything that we've done, everything that we've known how to do <laughs> to create change or healing or growth in our lives, everything we've done 
has got us to where we're at, but we know we could take it further. And so again, I just want to stress, we're asking for help from everything that's greater than us that wishes us well, we are consciously stepping into the unknown to get help with pain and suffering. And uh, I like to look at when when this is when we come into the ceremony, uh, we're asking for kind of like an excavation <laughs> of everything that is in our body, mind, spirit complex that isn't aligned with our prayer. And so the medicine's going to go in and bring it all out. And we can be celebratory of that, or we can get lost in the here's this negative thought, here's this old experience, here's this old trauma, um, because it comes up and out. It, we are mindful often of what we're letting go of. Not always. I've definitely purged things and I'm like, I have no idea what that was, but it obviously needed to be out of me. Um, sometimes we can go into loops of like, you know, that thing comes up and old mental processes that have been like, you know, stuck in the quagmire of that particular phenomena, that particular thought process. And we like go right back into it. You don't need to go into it. You can just celebrate like whoopee la, that's gone. I don't need to deal with it anymore. Hallelujah. Let it go. The softer and more surrendered you are, the easier it will be. The simpler our prayer is, the easier it is to stay connected with that prayer. So long drawn out explanation of this is why I've got this problem. It really kind of makes it sticky in our consciousness and makes it difficult to get rid of. But I want to be happier in my life. I want to uh, be able to serve living my noble purpose. I want to be in loving community, uh, you know, simple, a clear and simple prayer uh, that we can stay connected to throughout the time, the, from the time that we register through the time that we're feeling like it's integrated is really, really helpful. And sometimes getting clarity on that prayer takes some time. And again, this medicine can help you with that. Ah, oh, let's just take a breath. <laughs> Give ourselves some movement. Um, so I want to share just a little bit more about me. Again, it's really important when you sit with different medicines, different um, in different containers, who you sit with is very, very important. And so I just wanted to share a little bit about my journey with entheogens. Uh, it started in 1998, working consciously with cannabis, which previously I had not had an appreciation for, had some judgments about, but it came to, into my life in a perfect time, and I started being in ceremony with it, and it helped me to be aware of where in my body I was holding certain subconscious patterns, and it really assisted in the work that I do with clients which is how our subconscious behaviors, habits, decisions how, that are not helpful, how are they showing up in my body, mind, and spirit? And how can I unravel them and release them so that I can have a different experience? And cannabis helps me somat to be more somatically aware of where that is showing up in my body. And, um, and I wanna mention that in our Wachuma ceremonies, we often start by offering cannabis edibles and cannabis to smoke throughout the day. And it's in large part because of my own experience with cannabis and how helpful it is in dropping me even deeper. It's not, uh, I know some people work with it to escape hard feelings. For me, it makes me ultra aware, <laughs> ultra aware, but in a way that's loving and kind. And so we'll, again, we'll be doing practices to help you integrate and the cannabis, just like the Wachuma, just like everything that we offer, it's to be of service and you get to choose whether you ingest or not. And that 
medicine can help you whether you ingest or not. Um, in 2002, I started working with uh, ayahuasca uh, with a Quechuan shaman from Peru and did two dietas with him and worked with him in um, group and in private work for seven years. And he's very beloved. He uh, his I can I think I can say his name now because he's not coming to the United States anymore. His name is Don Jose Campos, and he's just an incredible being. He has um, there are many facilitators. Not well, I shouldn't say many. There are a few facilitators that I know that um, worked with him with ayahuasca who are beloved as well. So um, he's an incredible human being. And I feel really honored to have been able to work with him in the Bay Area and in Peru as well with with him in in the Amazon. Uh, I completed I, I completed my work with ayahuasca in 2010 at least I thought so she said don't come back until I call you. <laughs> and I had a profound healing from from that final ceremony with her in 2010. And right after that, I had just started, I just started working with Medicine Path Native American Church, just started attending their Chinupa ceremonies or prayer ceremonies and started working with Wachuma at the end of 2010. And uh, I have Native American roots, but my Native American roots are not even that specific, only a guess of what tribe based on the area um, that my ancestors came from uh, because those kinds of things weren't respected. So they weren't recorded and they were even hidden. And it was only until I was much older in my life after many, many visions of being Native American and thinking I was crazy, was it confirmed that we do have Native, I do have Native American roots, um, but, I wouldn't even know how to connect with that tribe. So I was very, very grateful to be welcomed into Medicine Path, Native American Church. Again, it's a Lakota tradition. Um, and then sat with them pretty much weekly for two years and uh, sat in many, many of their Wachuma ceremonies. They brought their sweat lodge to land that I was living on uh, in 2010, 2012, excuse me. And I received my Wachuma ministry from Medicine Path Native American Church at the end of 2012, beginning of uh, 2013. And uh, I have a master's degree in counseling psychology, and I have and expressive arts therapy from California Institute of Integral Studies. Uh, I have training in being able to support trauma, PTSD in groups and individually. Um, I did my practicum in hospital and uh, been able to work with people, work dealing with all kinds of mental, emotional, and physical uh, challenges through my academic career. And um, so I feel quite qualified to support. And now I have the support of Dr. Matthew Gamble, who has over 20 years of engaging as a spiritual leader, leading transformational retreats. His uh, doctorate is in transformational leadership, and he has spoken to thousands across six continents and so and we definitely share the same prayer the same vision the same mission uh, to create safe and sacred spaces for our diverse community to learn heal and grow together and he has been doing it without entheogens uh, he did it for 20 plus years and now has stepped in i think since consciously since 2017 uh, working with entheogens. So we are, I'm so delighted to have him be a part of it. The two of us together, it's so much more powerful than when I was leading with assistance. Um, and our, sir, our gatherings are uh, small. We have about 10 people plus Matthew and myself. 
Um, oh, I will skip back to something. <clears throat> I know that people ask. Uh, they ask if they should fast for ceremony, like beforehand, not have any food. And that's up to you. It can be really, really helpful. I've fasted many times. There are also many times where just based on tuning into my body and knowing how to listen to my own body, I know I need a hearty breakfast because I'm going to need the, the calories for the day. So really honor what's true and right for you around that. Um, back into uh, Matthew and I as facilitators, I uh, witness him to be an incredibly loving, kind, uh, present person whose sacred witness is transformational. And any time during ceremony, you feel like there's something going on mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, that is challenging. And the practices and the information we give you in ceremony is not helping you to re relax and let go and surrender and receive the help, please ask either of us. That's what we're here for. We're both qualified to support you in that way. And it's not an interruption of ceremony to do that. Uh, Wachuma is the medicine. I was told from Medicine Path, Native American Church, it's the medicine of unconditional joy. It doesn't mean free from grief or loss, but it's there's still there's this sense of deep joy and a reverence and love for life even in the midst of the hard experiences of being a human which is priceless um so we can't we it, you know this medicine isn't about avoiding difficulties in our lives but having that faith that reverence that sense of love and beauty in our lives despite the hard times that we go through. So another piece about how to choose, how to know that you're coming into a safe and sacred environment, your guide or your guides, your facilitator or facilitators have to be actively engaged in doing their own shadow work. Uh, that's essential. And uh, I, Definitely, this is, I, I don't know how to not <laughs> be engaged with my shadow. Uh, and I witness Matthew, Dr. Matthew being completely dedicated to the elevation of his life and uh, working with, acknowledging, uh, loving up and elevating um, the shadow that arises. And both of us are sacred mirrors for each other and we call each other in not out, but in, in a really beautiful, loving, compassionate way. And uh, our container is to, you know, we don't project our, our shadow onto the container that we create. Uh, it's really important because a facilitator who's not aware of their own shadow, I've worked with powerful shamans who were amazing and had a, did incredible things who had unaddressed shadow that literally sent people to the hospital. So it's important. Your, you know, your psychic well-being, your spiritual well-being, your mental well-being, your emotional well-being, but also even your physical well-being can be impacted by working in a container. Even somebody who's powerful, an indigenous, you know, facilitator, if they're not doing their own inner shadow work can still cause harm. Uh, if you would like to learn more about me and my work, you can look up my web website. It's loesh.com. That's what I use as a middle. Sometimes I just use my Amanda Eloesh, um, E-L-O-E-S-H.com. And uh, Matthew is magnetizeglobal.com magnetizeglobal.com and you can check us out you can also check us out on our website livingwisdomchurch.org livingwisdomchurch.org uh, and if you are not signed up for our announcements please feel free to do that please uh, get on our mailing list 
So here are some practical ways to prepare. Uh, again, not much is contraindicated as far as medications or diet show up uh, in a way that honors your inner wisdom. Um, honor your, you know, your process as far as um, giving yourself spaciousness from as much social media as possible beforehand, especially things that are violent, heavy, ne you know, negative, um, activating um, chemicals in the system that are, you know, adrenaline, cortisol, stress related things, uh, the more gentle you can be with yourself coming into ceremony, the better. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's great to be mindful of sexual activity with ayahuasca, they recommend, you know, not having any sexual contact so that your psychic space is free. It doesn't mean that sex is bad. Um, it just when we're sexually intimate with somebody uh we're really you know we're we're merging a lot of energy with that other being and if we want to come in to the ceremony experiencing our own sovereignty and centering in our own prayer and really being true to that especially if we're making a prayer about our relationship it might be really really helpful to have some space psychically to have you know just like put it put have a sexual fast, you know, if it feels like it serves you, it's definitely not necessary, but the invitations there, if it feels like it can serve your prayer and your experience. Um, yeah, and um, giving yourself positive things, you know, inspirational music. Uh, if you are need find the need to entertain yourself with something to find something uplifting something elevating something that makes you laugh that's uh, positive uh, and if you can not allow for a digital detox we definitely require that your devices not be a part of our day um, so even during breaks we ask that all devices be turned off and that you not be looking at them if there's some kind of oh my gosh i just found out my kid is sick and i'm i'm you know whatever it might it might be best for you to not be in ceremony because you can't really fully be present surrendered and open and receptive if you're someplace else and it might be better to come at another time so we ask that all tech all devices be turned off and that you just leave them until we are complete with our day and i like to put up a little auto response the day before the day of and the day after that says i'm in a transformational experience and i am not going to be available on my email um you know your connection's important to me I'll get to you as soon as possible and it just, you know, check in about things that are important, make sure people know I'm going to be detoxing from uh, tech uh, for a few days. Please give that to yourself if you can. It's really, really helpful. Uh, again, uh, we'll go into this uh, with the integration recording, um, but if we want something to shift in our lives, then we have to create space for that shift to happen. That means time to rest and to be gentle and to allow something new to come in to be to create space in our consciousness, to be willing to be curious and in the unknown for as long as possible so that new thing can show up and present itself to us in our relationships you know for things to be different to create make it gentle on yourself and if you, so part of the preparation part of the big part of the integration is something that you need to do in the preparation which is to create space so if you can avoid going jumping right back into work you know saying no to as many things keeping your schedule as clear as possible at, you know as long as possible 
at least a day. Four days is sacred, sacred timing for uh, Medicine Path, Native American Church, for the Lakota tradition, for Wachuma. Uh, four days sacred time to really integrate what happens. So if you can make that four days afterwards as spaciousness and open as possible and allow yourself to be in the curios curiosity and the unknown, it's going to be really, really helpful. Um, it can be really, really helpful to let loved ones know that you're going to be going into a transformational experience that may lead to changes in habits, thoughts, and behaviors and some decisions that may be surprising to them. Uh, you don't, I mean, you know, long time ago, <laughs> more and more people are open now to entheogen experiences, especially the legal ones. Um, but there can still be people in our lives that are judgmental and uh, you don't need to be dishonest. Uh, and you can just, you know, share, I'm going to have a transformational experience and Things about the way I think and make decisions and behave in my life may be different and I'm, I'm going to need some time to integrate. So let them know you're going to need spaciousness. Things might be different. Uh, you know, en en enlist as many people as, as you can in your community, in your circle of friends, you know, so that they can be supportive of you and to recognize some people just can't and they don't want to because if you change that means they're going to have to change and so they may be resistant and they that may cause funk and again if that feels overwhelming matthew and i are here for you please reach out the, the ways that your life may change afterwards may be scary uh it may prompt falling back into old behaviors trying to piece old things together uh, out of safety instead of allowing the new miraculous possibility to come in. And that's what we're here to support you in. But if you can get support from friends, family, community, uh, it's so much better. Uh, allow your relationships to be different. Your boundaries may become healthier. Uh, you may not, uh, be so open to ways of being that you were before. Uh, so you may show up differently in your relationships and it's great to kind of let them know that that may be a possibility. Um, I already mentioned the four days and again, but it could be a whole lifetime. You know, some people have one ceremony and it changes their whole life and they just stay curious and open and it just keeps serving them and they only need one me medicine ceremony and they just continue to stay open and allow that prayer and that medicine and everything that they welcomed in to support them in the forward momentum of their life and they just go with it uh, so the longer you can stay curious open and available to everything that's greater than you that wishes you well showing up to support your prayer the better you will be. And again, if there's becomes contraction, tightness, grasping onto old ways, please reach out to us. This is what we're here to help you with, to, you know, welcome in something new in a way that feels gentle, peaceful, exciting. And I will say it again, because it's so important. It's really helpful to let go of expectations or the need to control or predict what's going to happen in ceremony. We've found that being up in the head, analyzing, criticizing, being in judgment about yourself or other people in the ceremony, like these are all safety mechanisms to really, you know, to armor the self, to be in this, like I'm in control, to really support, soften, open, relax, trust trust that you made a really great decision for yourself. <laughs> um, of all of the many, uh, I've served over 200 ceremonies, entheogen ceremonies, over a thousand people. And I've never had an incident, knock on wood, never had an incident where somebody felt like they were unsafe, or they, you know, I've had people have, you know, preferences about how things would have gone. And again, step into the unknown, we get hopefully something different than we expected. 
um, but it's been safe. We've had safe experiences consistently and I've consistently attracted people who've had traumatic experiences from unsafe medicine ceremonies, people who have are dealing with trauma, who have had trauma from community come and have healing, people who have been in cults come and feel very held and supported and uh, safe. So, and had consistent feedback in my, this, all the supervision of all the work I've done on a lot of different levels that this is a safe and sacred container. So allow yourself to receive uh, of this opportunity to be really held in a good way. Let's see. I already mentioned things may fall apart if they're not aligned with your prayer, jobs, relationships, old ways of responding that felt safe. It can feel very awkward. Be gentle with yourself. Uh, give yourself plenty of time to rest. Uh, be in inner contemplation in the ceremony, uh, you know, to really let yourself be in meditation. Uh, when after ceremony, if you can give yourself time to be in nature, to do yoga, to dance, to journal, to do dream work, to have mineral baths, we live here in Calistoga, California, Wapo land, sacred Wapo land. It all exists because of the sacred, powerful healing waters that are here. Unfortunately, all fortunately and unfortunately, all these beautiful sacred mineral springs are available to the public via resorts, spas, um, different kinds of boutique hotels and resort spas from pricey to very, very pricey. And if you can give yourself the gift of coming and receiving and basking in these mineral waters before and after our ceremony, we encourage you to do that. Harbin Hot Springs is probably the most um, financially feasible, accessible, um, and it's 35 minutes from our home. And you can camp there overnight. You can get 24 hour pass. I think it's about $35, but you also need membership which is very, very reasonable. Um, we highly recommend you give it to yourself if you can, the time and the space. So plan for that. Uh, get a massage, get a mud bath, soak in the mineral waters, you know, make it the big deal that it is. And I know I started out saying ayahuasca said I'm a big fucking deal and she did. And we don't traditionally swear in ceremony. It feels sharp in the container something happens energetically. So we are mindful of our speech in ceremony. As you know, I'm not opposed to swearing outside and we really encourage mindful speech and speaking words of praise, words of beauty, words that evoke imagery for our own body, mind, spirit, but also everybody in the container to visualize that for us. What are we calling in for our lives? If we're sharing negativity and heaviness and all this negativity, all these hard stories and feelings, that's what everybody sees. And that's what they're, that's what they're, you know, kind of calling in with us. And we don't want to do that. So we stay focused on words, on imagery that are elevating. Um, It's important to stay curious, not just during ceremony, but afterwards, and which we'll go into with the integration part, but staying open to how the medicine is answering your prayer. Uh, again, if the way that it's showing up, that the things unravel in ceremony and after ceremony feel like, I don't know how this is helpful, again, please reach out to us. That's what we're here for. If you feel like you really, really want to make the most of your experience, especially if things feel like they are falling apart, it's important to get support. Please connect with the people that show up in ceremony. You're going to probably meet some amazing people that you'll want to stay connected with. Please do that. Reach out to them, you know, uh, get support from each other and community. We're here to build community. We want those friendships to be forged. We want you to feel like you're surrounded by 
amazing humans who are safe and going to treat you in, with respect and reverence. You can also reach out to me or Matthew, or maybe there's somebody else that you already know to be a support, but please make sure you are getting support because if you make a big prayer for your life and things, there are multiple things or even one thing that's really concrete in your life that's not in alignment, it will need to change and it can feel really disruptive at minimum. It can feel traumatizing and scary uh, at most. And if you're not familiar with how to navigate that and don't then and don't have the tools to make it a gentle transition from where you're at now to where you want to be, it can be really traumatizing and it can activate old patterns that basically counteract all that's happening in our favor to get us to this other side, we can like kind of scramble back. So um, please reach out to us again. I'll say it again. That's what we're here for. That's our specialty. That's what we're best at. And we want to make this amazing, the biggest, most amazing up level in your life. And it can be gentle, um, but it may require some support. So this is the time. Let us know if you think you might need some help or if you want some help now. Uh, already mentioned connecting with fellow journeyers. Schedule some time, some check-in calls. Like really do it um, because once you step out of ceremony, there are so many other things that were in place before and we can slip into old habits and having these scheduled things. Oh, I'm going to come. I know I want to come to ceremony again. So I'm going to schedule that. I'm going to talk to Amanda or Matthew. So I'm going to schedule that. I'm going to talk, you know, I'm going to schedule time with this other person I really connected with in ceremony. I'm going to, you know, make sure that I put in my calendar to uh, show up to Amanda and Matthew's entheogen preparation and integration circle that's online, you know, to schedule things to help remind you and keep this prayer alive, because this is the real world. We're in ceremony, it gets it can be, you know, we can choose that. But it's a matter of waking up those parts of ourselves that have been put to sleep, you know, really waking them up and continuing to step into experiences that remind us this is the new reality. And I don't know all of it because it's bigger than my conscious imagination, but I'm stepping up to meet with everything that's greater than me that wishes me well to create a better future for myself and for the world. So yes, please come to our a free entheogen preparation and integration circles right now they are every Wednesday every first Wednesday every first Wednesday of the month in the evening. You are hopefully on our mailing list, if not make sure you are you will get announcements about all of that. Um, people have asked me Amanda do you and Matthew do you take the Wachuma and I say yes I absolutely do. Um, I take different amounts because I just listen to what the medicine is asking me to do to be of service. That's most of the time has been my first prayer in the ceremony. Please help me to be of service to the ceremony, to be more like this medicine. And uh, I take, it's often a microdose that I take for myself. Sometimes I don't take any, but it's been very rare. Usually I have at least a microdose or homeopathic amount. Uh, to commune with the medicine and uh, so Matthew and I do receive and we're very, very sober we're very, very clear of mind we're very grounded and able to support you in your journey. Um, people get caught up in how much do I take again, you can have zero medicine in your physical body and still have a huge quantum leap in your journey i've had that said before from people who have shown up no medicine in their system quantum leap i was you know had this profound experience i've had people just from a sound healing experience a dmt journey um dave navarro if you know who he is uh was in one of my sound healings at esalen and said it took him to dmt world um, so you can have nothing in your system and have a profound experience if you're very open and available to it. And uh, you can have a lot of medicine and 
either it's the teaching and the way that the medicine's working with you by keeping you grounded or there's something resistant in you keeping you from you know that elevated experience but to trust that the medicine's giving you what you need you can choose zero ingestion just making a prayer and asking for help a homeopathic amount a microdose you know small small it you know you can you can range it with me or you can just say i'm gonna leave it up to you to intuitively give me what i need amanda and i i will do that and again we typically have three rounds of medicine uh i will remind you we offer cannabis edibles usually at the beginning and usually have cannabis to smoke throughout the day Again, this is to help your somatic experience to be more aware of how to clear out the blocks more fully and allow the medicine to come in. If you work with hape, if you don't know what hape is, don't worry about it. But if you are aware of hape and you work with it, it's welcome in our ceremonies. You can work with it at any time, preferably in break time or at a time when it's not going to be disruptive to other people speaking prayers. Um, I used to do a hape round in ceremony um, before COVID. Uh, and then I just didn't feel good about <laughs> breathing into somebody's nostril. Uh, so, but uh, I can administer hape to you. If you're curious about it, you can ask about it um, in, in, in ceremony when we're offering hape or when you, you know, if you want to ask about it beforehand, please reach out to us. We can share more about that. Um, and yes, I will, I will administer it, but it's by request only. I don't do it compulsory, uh, right now, at least that may change in the future. And again, every ceremony is different. We never know exactly how it's going to go. We have created a flow that feels really good, really beautiful, really helpful, and it tends to be consistent, but things arise. We're in ceremony. And so. <laughs> we honor what's happening in ceremony versus trying to control and make it fit into a nice, you know, easy box of, you know, from this time to this time, we'll be doing this. Like it's, it's not like that. Um, what if this is my first time? Should I have a lower dosage? Uh, that's been a question that's asked. It's up to you. Um, you know, some, if you're feeling like you want to, tiptoe into it or as our sparkle tribes shares says have have a first date that's a little you know like you're not going to just dive right in you know maybe maybe have a lower dosage see how that goes it's perfectly all right you're welcome to do that um we honor your sovereignty and your choice and your inner wisdom there's no pressure to take any more than you feel called you should feel it within a, about 45 minutes to an hour um, and it's about a six hour journey from the final round. Uh, it usually feels quite warm, softening, opening, open heart, kind of some people describe it like MDMA, like ex an, an ecstasy journey. Um, I felt very much the same way, like really soft, open, available, you know, even more loving in my heart towards others. Um, it can, you know, that medicine comes in and it literally cellularly displaces uh, parts, of, you know, liquid in our bodies with itself. So it's great to drink a lot of water and then also to know that that it's helping us to purge things psychically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally and physically from our body, mind, spirit complex that don't align with our prayer. And so purging is a typical part of it. That can mean throwing up, which we call getting well, and you'll have buckets for that. Um, please do that in the ceremony space so we can support you in making that an easier release. I call it the seven dwarves of release. So there's purgy, there's pukey, I mean, there's um, coffee, there's burpy and farty and uh, weepy, sweaty, shaky, you can shake it out, uh, laughy. Uh, there's all different ways that we can release hiccups, all different kinds of ways that, that energy can come be released from our system. Uh, please honor 
you know, whatever's happening is okay. Um, it's just stuff that no longer serves you that's coming out of your system. Drinking a lot of water. And again, the practices that we have woven in, the breath work, the gentle movement, all of those are to help create that spaciousness for the medicine, all of the different medicines, seen and unseen, to come in and help us have our get our healing. Um, already talked about food, bringing snacks, fasting is optional. Um, and then people have asked, how does ceremony go? We have lots of breaks. We encourage you to not be chatty with other people, to not be in conversation, to save that to the end when we're when we're done with ceremony, we're eating our Wopi La Potluck to connect and to schedule those calls to connect afterwards so that you can really drop in in this rarefied space to be in your prayer. Uh, but we do have plenty of breaks for you to use the bathroom, to stretch, to step outside. Uh, hopefully it'll be a beautiful day and get some nice sun on your face. Um, we have, as I mentioned, some integration pieces with every single round to help you get more soft and open and receptive in your body, your mind, and your spirit through breath work, through movement, through guided meditation. We have a sound healing that helps you to really, really relax and hopefully really relax and really receive uh, inspirational, vibrational shifts in your whole being. If you're a musician, you're welcome to add your voice. You're welcome to add music to the sound healing. And please check in with us uh, because we're guiding the ceremony and the music is a powerful guide for the healing and we want you to receive we want you to show up and be receptive and uh, to fully receive and not to try to guide or be guiding for other people or performing for other people if something you know if you've got experience offering music and ceremony please connect with us tune in with us about that um and bring your your uh instruments for breaks or for after the wopila we'd love to have you share and just make sure you check in with us um, about sharing during the sound healing uh people ask will i be able to drive home afterwards yeah usually that's the case that's you know pretty much uh always the case um the medicine has a gentle come down and then all of a sudden you just it, no you just know like oh i feel great all right it's time to go home the medicine will make that very clear for you um again if you want we encourage you to get yourself uh, a room if you can uh, give that to yourself at a beautiful you know one of the one of the many places here that have mineral baths that you can soak in Harbin's not that far away um, we do have some spaces here so please tune in with us about spending the night with us we can support you in working that out uh, and uh, you should be able to drive home afterwards uh, the medicine, as I said, will make it really, really clear and um, we won't expect you to leave until you're, you know, feeling safe enough to go. Our space does not have a sound barrier between those who are feeling complete with the medicine, with the ceremony, and want to start dropping into conversation over the wopila, over the potluck. You know, some people are really ready to eat and engage and talk. And some people, when we complete with our ceremony, still feel like there's more coming in. They're really in a very delicate place. They want to continue to be receptive to the medicine and in the altar space and in the ceremony space. So I'll turn on recorded music for people to be in the ceremony space. You're welcome to do that. And just know people are going to be maybe at different places you know, at the end of our ceremony, 
And so to really honor those who are still receptive and who are still kind of in the journey, uh, to be mindful of that. And, and just in case that person is you, it might be helpful to bring earplugs and maybe even an eye mask. We will have beautiful lighting and the altar will be lit and stay lit for you. Um, but it might be nice to have earplugs because there isn't a sound barrier right now between the ceremony space and where we have our potluck and conversations will happen. Um, and and if you need silence, we do have, or at least more quiet, we do have options that we can work with you on. So just let us know what you need at the end of ceremony. Uh, again, our group sizes are very small. It's around 10 people, me and Matthew. It's really, really important that you arrive on time. Uh, so there's a lot uh, of orientation on how to be in the ceremony space, how to work with the medicine, how to help make sure that our container is safe and sacred. And time is one of the powerful elements of the container. So if you're going to be spending the night with us, plan on showing up really early. If you're uh, not spending the night with us, early is on time on time is late <laughs> so we want to i the time may fluctuate a little bit so i'm not going to share a specific time right here but um whatever the time is on the preparation information that you get please read through all of it uh, please make sure that you note the time that the do not cross this time barrier because uh once we start we want everybody to be there and showing up after we've started it disrupts the container and we've found traditionally it really makes it hard on everyone and it makes it really hard on me and matthew and it's really really important that what we share that everybody's aware of what we're sharing um so if you can't be on time please um please opt out uh don't try to come and you know expect to show up please just plan on coming and sitting with us at another time in the future so time's really 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 important we ask for people not to cross talk to not give advice to other people um that can really tear down and create a sense of i know better than you you know we're all here to receive from the unknown and uh giving advice to somebody else is kind of putting yourself assuming that you're in a place to help somebody else actually we're all here to receive help so avoid giving advice if there's something that pops in like oh my gosh uh i totally this book might be really awesome for this person or oh there's this cool video that i'd love to sh you know that that reminds me that person's prayer um please wait until after ceremony is complete and then ask them, hey, there's something that was sparked for me um, about your prayer that might be helpful. Are you open to me sharing? Uh, please always ask permission. And then if somebody is asking to talk to you about something, you can always say yes, no, maybe later. Um, again, plan on being off your devices. Um, some people love to dance and move during breaks and all have recorded music. And if there are musicians that want to turn that music down and play their own music, that's totally welcome during breaks. Some people really want to move their bodies. You know, it feels very activating and it's great to give your body movement. Some people really love to journal. Some people may want to bring, you may want to bring art supplies and color and, you know, draw things. That's all great. Um, and some people like to just stay surrendered and receive healing and get the internal guidance from the medicine. So everybody's going to have a different way of wanting to work with the medicine. If you're a journaler, bring a journal, may bring a journal anyway, you know, uh, wear clothing that you can move around in um, and just really honor your own experience throughout the day. What somebody else is doing may inspire you. you may like, that looks fun. I'm going to do that. 
Um, but don't let anybody else's experience make you feel like how you're doing it is wrong or needs to change. Um, there is going to be time for you to be in your own experience, uh, sound healing after we complete the sound healing until we gather for our completion round is fairly open. Uh, I usually play pre-recorded music and if other people have a music they want to play during that time, that's welcome. Um, and so you'll have time to meditate, go inward, to do all those things I just mentioned that feel really good to engage with the medicine. And Matthew and I are available to be of more support uh, once the sound healing is over. Although if you need help right in the middle of the sound healing, please ask for it anyway. That's perfectly all right. It's not an interruption. At the end, once we once we have the break or not the break, but that open time, the, the sound healing is we've had the medicine, we've had the sound healing, we've had this spaciousness to go inward to meditate with the journal dance, do artwork, play music, uh, we gather for a completion round where anything that you still need help with, you can ask for help with anything that came through that's like, wow, this is amazing. I really want to share it in this circle of sacred witnesses. You're welcome to share that. So what do you need help with? Anything you need help with before we complete or anything beautiful already coming through that wants to be shared is great. And then uh, once that's complete, I'll smoke my Chanupa. I'll talk about that in ceremony, the meaning of that. And then we will step into the Wopila, which is a vegetarian potluck. Uh, we love gluten-free, we love sugar-free, we love dairy-free options. Um, you can be more social. We encourage you to build community, connect with people, have meaningful conversations. Um, just honor where you're at with that. Um, the in ceremony, sometimes when people are in ceremony, they're connecting with old trauma that hasn't been expressed. And there are some experiences like holotropic breath work where there's a loud, you know, they have the loud soundtrack going on and you can scream and you can moan and you can make all kinds of sounds and it's great. Um, this isn't that kind of ceremony. Uh, if you are feeling like something needs to come up, uh, I, I've found it helpful and done a lot of work with the clients who've, who've tuned into trauma that feels like a scream to bring a beautiful healing vibration to it so that the sound it makes is a healing, is an elevation. It brings it from that, like, I just want to scream to like, ah, you know, just something really beautiful that feels good in the body. Uh, sometimes hearing or feeling yourself scream can re-traumatize and it can definitely be traumatizing to others in the ceremony. It can be very alarming to our neighbors. And so if you feel, and we don't also don't want to, um, put a damper on your self-expression. So if you feel like you need to scream, <laughs> feel free to put your face in a pillow and let it go. Um, we will help you with that. We'll find a space for you to do what you need to do. And if it feels like it's disruptive to other people, we will invite you to come and support you in getting the healing, the release that you need in a way that's helpful for everyone. Um, so again, uh, both Matthew and I have a lot of experience in transformational work. I have a lot of experience helping people move through really intense experiences, trauma, and we can support you. Um, and it's important to make sure that you ask for help if you need help. And it's also really, really important if you have a history of being unable to take full accountability for your behavior and to be safe, especially with altering substances, we still expect you to take accountability for safe and sacred behavior. At least the safe part. We can help you with the sacred part. We can give you suggestions for ways to make your experience more sacred. But if you cannot take accountability for yourself or question your ability to take full accountability for your behavior to be safe, 
we will ask you to please refrain from taking part in this ceremony. And we are happy to do one on one private work with you to support you in getting to that place. Private ceremony with us may be the perfect thing. But if you question your ability to take full accountability for your behavior in a group ceremony, um, please withdraw from the ceremony. Uh, so there's lots of ways to heal. We encourage you to focus on your own journey and let go of fixing or rescuing mode or judging that somebody else is, is having a hard time. They may be having the most amazing experience ever. Uh, so really uh, tune into your, we really focus on your own journey and asking for help if you need it and just staying in your own experience with the medicine. Um, we are really well trained in helping someone have an unexpected experience. So please let us do our job. Um, please don't feel like you need to help us. Whew, that was a long one. Thank you so much for tuning in. Your presence and uh, really taking in all that has been shared is going to make your experience the bfd that it can be it's going to make it more powerful more effective and the way that you show up in the container is going to be a lot more powerful for other people you're going to raise the raise the bar and raise the vibration and help make a beautiful exquisite safe and sacred container for our time in ceremony together. Thank you again so much for your presence. Thank you for honoring these medicines. Thank you for choosing to show up in a safe and sacred way. And until we get to connect and be in person with each other, may the source be with you.